Hey guys, and welcome back to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and this is episode 9 of Let's Play Broken Sword, the S Broken Sword 2, the, smoke the Smoking. The Smoking Mirror. What is going on today? Right, let's talk to this guy. In fact, what happened yesterday? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, right, we washed up on this shore, we managed to smoke out this guy, and we've got to go find a route. So let's talk to him about a route. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still not finished my sermon. Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village, and it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants. What? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. <laughs> so, what do you want? Why have you got your sunglasses on, George? You just said it's sunset. My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So, everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. What? It's the right village. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. No, there's no one of that description here. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I thought he just made up all those stories he tells. I never thought of him as being wise. Let's talk about the old man. Look at that. That's cool. I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? I know. Oh, it's not even there. You guys know what I was thinking. Oh, never mind. Let's ask about Nico. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. <laughs> give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? <laughs> uh, right, I think he might like some dog biscuits. Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. Oh, is he going to go give them to him? <laughs> Brilliant. So, is this your first visit to our planet? I am from the same planet as you. I'm from California. Why, we're practically neighbors. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. Can we go? Can we go in? Is that? Can we go in now? Stop! Ah, oh. this is a private village. Ah, oh, all right. Let's talk to the guard again. Give him something else. I'm quite interested because we haven't got this anymore. We put it down under the press. It's somehow. This cone <laughs> could have a thousand uses. Yeah, like what? A protective helmet? I don't think so. That was, um, that was weird. A worm, a lipstick. Let's give him the stone. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the stone, but let's see what the lipstick does. Would your wise man have any use for lipstick? Not in that color. <laughs> Haven't you anything in black? Of course I don't. Look, I know it's not much, but I want your shaman to have this. Do you expect him to eat that? 
He's an old man, you know. He might choke. All right, then let's go with the uh, stone. This stone is what brought me here. That's a spirit stone. I wouldn't touch it if I was you. You're right. It could be cursed. Ah, oh, what? Well, I guess it's more biscuits then. There wasn't much point in sending the empty box back to the shaman. Oh, well, what do we do then? Oh, I've got an idea. No, that's the loads thing screen. Why don't we put that inside that? Yes, here we go. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. We haven't really um, done any inventory puzzles in this one, have we? Where we combine them. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. I think we go on a little bit What are you bit doing for entertainment trip? here in the jungle? <laughs> the we jungle. make documentaries. Me and Tabtick, we've appeared in seven TV films and an article in National Geographic. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. Awesome, let's go in, see the shaman. I think he'll give us a rendition of Ebenezer Good. Get that reference. There he is. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the Coyote Stone to this village. Oh, take your glasses off before. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. <laughs> Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? What root? Yeah. Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tell there's nothing sacred with these people. That was a secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You'd think he wants to spend some time with his kids. His kids? Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys by my reckoning. All conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey <laughs> Oh my <Dance>. word. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't want to come back. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the route? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse, which marked the close of the Fifth Age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. 
luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. So we've got to go and find some of these stones, haven't we? There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the fifth age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Katlipoka would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guadamonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. So I'm going to have to go on the hunt for these two other stones, I guess. Tell me more about the Jaguar stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Guaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain... The man known as El Draco sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Okay. Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Okay, so we ask about this um, lipstick? I don't suppose this would be any use to you. It sure would. This wax on a stick will change our lives. Uh, what do you want it for? To decorate our bodies for the monkey dance. <laughs> Suppose I was to believe there was anything in your story, other than the rambling delusions of a seriously wacky old man. Suppose I was to swallow it, hook, line, and kitchen sink. What then? Then you would see that the fate of the human race rests upon your shoulders. Oh dear, no pressure then. Where is the jaguar stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland, across the Great Sea, to England. So I guess we've got to go to England. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. Well, that's where we're going next then, isn't it? What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. Can we have the route now, please? Now do I get the route? Here. Take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird sings to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome. But you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. <laughs> I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party days. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Hey, except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. All right, let's go straight up here. See Nico, make sure she's all right. Do I have the route? I have the route. Oh, there she is. Eat the root. Probably not. <laughs> Nico, I brought you this root. Oh. No way was she going to be able to chew the root. I needed to give her the antidote in a more digestible form. Oh, uh, yeah, we need to go and, um, we need to go and uh, squeeze the, squeeze the life out of it. Let's go do that now. With the, with the press. I presume it's so, anyway. Oh, we do have this still. Well. The stones thought. were too heavy. No, not the stones, this. 
the so cone was ideal as a makeshift container. Fabulous. And then we put the root in the press. And then let's squeeze that mother. As the liquid was squeezed from the root, it collected in the cone. Let's pick up that cone and go and save Nico's life. So story-wise, we're going to have to head to England and also the Isle, the Captain's Island. Look, Hubert, the antidote. Ben, what are you waiting for? Get it, go quickly. Nico. Drink this. Oh, George, it's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other <laughs> stones? What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, George Stobart? The patient is sounding more like her own self already. Nico recovered quickly from her fever. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. I traced the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. <laughs> All right, that was pretty quick. Uh, okay, so I guess we're on the island of Ketch. Let's talk to this man here. See if you can find a stone. When I think of Broken Sword 2, this is the bit that I think of the most. I don't know why, but I feel like I know it. Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stobart. You're a surveyor, right? Mr. Bronson. And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else would I have a Theodolite? I don't know. Abbey, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. <laughs> this is similar to the stone I'm looking for. What makes you think you'll find it here? Because when the stones were stolen in the 17th century... Hold it! The stones have been lost for 300 years? Approximately. And you're hoping to find them again? You're nuts. And why here? A wise old Indian shaman told me he saw the stones in a vision. Ha ha. That's rich. Listen, I got work to do, okay? Catch you later, Bronson. I mean, I'll give it to George. When he has something he needs to do, he just goes through with it, doesn't he? We've come to this island in the Caribbean because some old guy mentioned it briefly. Nothing more. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. You know, wherever I go, I hear those words. Paris, Syria, Ireland, or Spain. Makes no difference. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I was trying to show some interest in your project. All right, come on then. Let's go over here. Let's grab this net. It is very beautiful art in this game, isn't it? I didn't want a fishing net. Okay. Let's see if there's anything at the end of the pier. Can we go this way? I'm just going to walk to the end and there's nothing there. Oh, there's a boy. Boy with a boat. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means... Uh, well, it, it's just a name. <laughs> is it true that Captain Ketch lived around here? That's right. That's his house up on the hill. It's a museum now. Yeah? That's exactly what I need. Thanks, kid. You won't get inside, you know. The old ladies close it down. What old ladies? Who are these old ladies you mentioned? 
Miss Frost and Miss Mina Ketch. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Branson's doing. Him have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They kind of regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> no school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. A lot of competition. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. I beg to differ. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. Oh, he got himself hung today. Okay, let's see if we can use the boat. I didn't know the first thing about sailing a dinghy. Okay. So I guess the, pro the, the idea is to go to the museum and sneak inside somehow. Can we have a look through the theodolite? Is that how it works? Is that how a theodolite works? I think you have to line things up, don't you? Yeah, here we go. Ah, cat with a ball. These must be old ladies. Let's see if we can get the cat. The cat's ball first. Hi, puss. Want to play? Oh, ow. Hey, cat. Watch where you're putting those claws. Just like the other cat, cat in Syria. You wanted a ball? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. I don't like tea. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. That's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Strobart? Uh, yeah, I do. Personally, in life, I do. I have two myself. You bet. Especially spit roast. George. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yeah, definitely. Yes, I am. Um, you were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. Oh, that's sad. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. <laughs> you have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ? In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh no. He got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Oh dear. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure green-eyed envy. 
He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut mm. up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money. Trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark. And hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Letter of mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. Oh, dear. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk. Nasty fishy boy. That will do, Nina. <laughs> I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, 11, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina. Ooh, who's Emily? What can you tell me about Emily? Emily, what business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Stobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family <laughs> in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. Alright, fair enough. We've got quite a bit of information there, though. Right, guys, we're going to leave it there for today. And tomorrow we're going to try and get into this place. I see there's a little shiny thing there, but we'll have a look at that tomorrow. Um, please leave a like today. really appreciate it. Until next time, have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it is you're doing right now. And take care.